Okay, today I have with me yet another of these language entrepreneurs that are changing the way languages are learned. By creating content, systems, advice, uh, approaches to learning that are helping people in a way that the old language schools, I think, didn't. Today we have Pablo, Pablo Roman Humanes, who has a website or a, a channel on YouTube called Dreaming Spanish. Pablo, perhaps you could introduce yourself. Hi, Steve. Uh, thanks for the introduction. So, yes, um, I, me and other teachers were making content we're making comprehensible input uh, videos based on the ideas of Stephen Krashen, as, mm. as I know you know him and you've yes. done some videos with him. So they're, they really follow uh, the research on language, acqui language acquisition over the last few decades. Mm -hmm. And so we try to make uh, content that's as useful and as, as interesting as possible. You know, something that struck me today mm -hmm. was <clears throat> so right now there's a big debate as to whether people should go back to school, uh, you know, in-class learning, uh, go back to university, in-class learning in universities. The universities want to hold on to their income, so they're trying to insist that the students come to class. And mm -hmm. in all of that, I was thinking to myself, you know, the big difference today is, at least when it comes to languages, but probably it applies to other things as well. Why do we assume that learning has to be synchronous. In other words, you have a teacher, and while the teacher mm -hmm. is teaching, the learners are learning. It doesn't work that way. You can create a variety of content that is, you know, from a, a learning, from a didactic point of view, very rich, and the learner can access it whenever he or she wants. It can be asynchronous. It doesn't have to be, you know, while the lecturer is lecturing. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think we're used to the traditional paradigm in mm -hmm. which there's a teacher and providing us with information. Mm -hmm. But of course, in the information age, that uh, doesn't hold as well. Right. And I get it that for language learning, uh, for many people, learning a language is about connection and about the people you meet with that language. Mm -hmm. And I still think if you can meet a per person, if you can meet in person, and make friends with the language, that's a really um, efficient way of spending your time. But most of the time you cannot. If you're driving around, you're walking, going for groceries or doing something, right. there's of course a lot of benefit you can get there. Or you're stuck at home because there's confinement because of COVID. Then there's a lot of time on your hands that you can make the most of if you have, as you say, asynchronous content. Right. You also and, have the benefit of being able to choose whatever interests you. Well, uh, well, that's right. But if you take a classroom, so the classroom teacher interacts with 10, 20, 30, or in the case yeah. of a university lecture, 200 mm -hmm. people. So one person with 20 or 200 people. It seems to me it makes more sense if each one of those people were able to learn on their own Yes. And then there would be less interaction with the teacher, but it would be more personal. So instead of having five classes a week, you have one class a week. Mm -hmm. And the rest of the time you're using content that you produced for Spanish. You're searching uh, conjugations, uh, you know, wherever you find them, uh, because there's no limit to the n amount of resources to, 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 to check up on you know, what, what form of the verb is this. Uh, and then you interact in a much more personal way with a teacher. To me, that's superior to a teacher trying to teach the same thing to 20 people in a classroom. Yeah, definitely. Because in case of a classroom with so many people, there's not even that element of like personalization or mm -hmm. personal connection because you're right. just too many people. So that benefit is also, also disappears. So yeah, as you say, it makes more sense. Now I saw on your you channel too. you talk about mm -hmm. you know sort of not not eliminating grammar but de-emphasizing grammar. Uh, your I would type... say I kind of eliminate grammar. <laughs> okay, you even eliminate it. Yeah. All right, you're more radical <laughs> yeah. than I am. Uh, but um, and then you say dreaming in Spanish, and and so it's this idea that the language is somehow going to enter into you, and the brain gets used to it. 
One of the problems that people are, people often raise is, so in the beginning, you know nothing. So there's no comprehensible, mm -hmm. comprehensible input at, at z level zero because you know nothing. So that there is there's this... No, th yeah. I would say there's no input that you cannot base yourself only on the words that you're hearing to understand right. what's happening. Right. But it can be comprehensible if there's enough context, enough additional information. True enough. True enough. Yeah. But yeah. at least insofar as the kind of learning that I do, where I'm with my uh, iPod and I'm uh, walking, running, doing the dishes, initially mm -hmm. there's no comprehension. I don't understand what they're saying. I've you know, got to claw my way through a lot of repetition to where I make some sense of this. And, and there's a mm -hmm. lot of beginner content out there in every language. There is an, a super abundance of beginner content. Everybody who writes a mm -hmm. textbook starts with the beginner stuff. Yeah. However, very soon, because as I've often mentioned, word frequency drops off very quickly. So you have this sense that you've seen these high frequency verbs or words so often and stuff. And now you start to venture and all of a sudden you discover that there's an awful lot of words to learn. And there seems to be a lack of easily sort of comprehensible, approachable, intermediate content. Because if you go straight to the authentic stuff, it's just a little mm -hmm. bit difficult. So how do you deal yeah, with that? That, that need for something that's not silly, not childish, not beginner, yet not at full-blown authentic level? Uh, I don't know that, that we've completely cracked it. Mm -hmm. And I think over time we'll probably get better at this. But right now what we do is uh, we try to focus on topics that are interesting for adults mm -hmm. or for, for everybody. Uh, we mm -hmm. One thing that we realize that can be, even if there's not that extra information of visual props or drawing, there's two things that can still make you more comprehensible than... Uh, input for natives or media for natives. Mm -hmm. One is just mm -hmm. uh, articulating properly and not not mm -hmm. speaking too, yes. too fast. And the right. other way, the other thing that also helps is not changing topics randomly. Because that's right. something that if you watch a YouTuber, if you watch a TV show, they start a conversation and if you don't know what's going on, who these, those people are, you don't have a lot of context to begin to even begin to understand what they're saying. And in our right. case, maybe we'll make a video, um, five or 10 minute video. You've seen the title, so you know what mm -hmm. it's going to be about. And it within all the videos stays within the same topic. Mm -hmm. Right. Certainly that's true. And, and that's true even on the, on the level of choosing an author. Like when I started, reading books in Russian, I would just read Tolstoy. And as long as I was okay. reading Tolstoy, it seemed the same vocabulary would come up. Whereas if I went to Dostoevsky, all of a sudden I was lost. Uh, and if you're talking about economics or something, you stay on mm -hmm. a subject, you do get the same vocabulary tending to read. Definitely. So that's a way of uh, mm -hmm. choosing content that's at your level is if what mm -hmm. you're reading from that author is still easy enough for you to enjoy, but hard enough that you still encounter new words, then you can just stay mm -hmm. within that topic or within that author is if, as you said before, uh, you're at the point in which there's no low frequency vocabulary anymore. You feel you're not learning right. just right. by changing authors. You're going to see that there's many new words that you encounter often, right? But that you don't yet know, right? right? Now, another subject. So you de-emphasize grammar, you don't mm -hmm. teach grammar, and we know, we both agree that speaking another language is a matter of developing new habits. So if you're an English mm -hmm. speaker, then you are in the habit of always using the personal pronoun, for example. That's just natural. Uh, you're in the habit of making no distinction between ser and star. It's just be. Uh, you're in the ha you are not in the habit of using the subjunctive. Mm -hmm. So how do you create these habits you can explain to a person, like I often use the example in English, you can explain to a person that the third person singular of the present tense takes S, and yet that's a very common mistake that every, you know, non-native speaker makes, that they don't, you know, he go instead of he goes. So understanding the principle and actually developing these habits, those are two different things. How do you get your Spanish learners to develop Spanish habits? So the way our method works is by 
trying to build a separate picture of the language in your brain, trying to keep connections between the two languages as little as possible in such a way that mm -hmm. English will not affect your output once you start outputting, once you start speaking Spanish. So we try to reduce the amount of interference that your native language will have with the language that you learn by right. doing input without translation, trying to not translate, no, not even connect those things between the two languages. Because I would say even mm -hmm. Sarah and Star, they're not to be, they're not the same. Right. So we're trying to, the ideal with our method would be that you wouldn't even make the connection between to be and Sarah and Star. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Okay, mm -hmm. that's interesting. Interesting. Yeah, because I mean, I know I often mention this speakers of English, uh, say Germans who speak, you know, fluent English, and they'll still say I have been living in Canada since many okay. years, which is a German mm -hmm. structure, it's not English structure. And they just cannot shake certain habits that come from their native language. And we all experience this. I mean, I'm, I probably, when I speak Spanish, I use the personal pro pronoun more than a native speaker would use it. Because these are habits that come over from your native language. Mm -hmm. So I guess you're never going to get perfection, but you want to try to get people to migrate more into a, a Spanish mode. And so you do this by trying to break the connection with their native So yeah, yeah. And it's based on, the, on research about comprehensible input. And my own experience, right. trying to also stick to this method to learn languages and comparing it to other languages that I've learned mm -hmm. through more traditional methods. And it's all right. based on the experience of uh, one linguist that developed this method in a school in, in Bangkok where they teach Thai. So I, I right. experienced that. I learned Thai there myself to learn the method. And now I'm mm -hmm. trying to apply it to, to Spanish. Okay, now we're going to leave a link to your mm -hmm. channel in the description Great, box. Great, thanks. And uh, just to tell uh, my viewers here, how, which languages do you speak besides very good English, Spanish, I presume, mm -hmm. <laughs> and Thai, what, what else? So yeah, my native languages are Spanish and Catalan. I'm, I'm Catalan. Uh-huh. And then I okay. speak English, French, Japanese, and Thai. Mm -hmm. I see. Okay. Um, I always ask this question, Catalan, between say Girona and Valencia, yeah. is there a difference? Sure, there's a, I would say there's, Catalan changes uh, more than Spanish within like less distance. So you okay. can drive for... But mutually, mutually comprehensible. Yeah, yeah, totally mutually comprehensible, yes. But maybe right. between okay. Girona and Valencia, it can change as much as between, uh, as Spanish between Madrid and Mexico or something. <laughs> oh, okay. yeah, very interesting. Okay, well, we got uh, Catalan at uh, Link, so maybe one day I'll learn it. Lovely part of the world. My wife and I, for our 50th anniversary, we were in uh, in uh, Tarragona, which was lovely, mm -hmm. and in Girona and, uh, and Barcelona. Yeah, uh, so on the, okay. uh, on the video in my yeah. channel, I hope you tell us about your experience in the Latin world. Oh, for sure. World. Okay, yeah, yeah. We're now going to have a Spanish discussion for, for his channel, so people who are interested can also go and visit mm -hmm. us there. Great. All right, then. Thank great. you. Bye, talking to you. Enjoyed Steve. it. Okay, bye. bye.